Hi, my name is Jonna and I play football for Chelsea FC and for the Swedish national team. And you are listening to the Blue Day podcast. Hello Chelsea supporters, here at the Blue Day podcast, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you this individual on the show today. He made 135 appearances for the club, keeping 32 clean sheets. He was part of the Chelsea team that won the FA Cup final in 97, the League Cup, the Cup Winners Cup and the Super Cup all in 1998. Here is Kevin Hitchcock. Kevin, welcome to the Blue Day podcast. How are we? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, it, like I said, it's, it's my absolute pleasure. Where else to begin than right at the beginning of your footballing journey, Kevin? Who influenced you to become a professional footballer? Um, I was very fortunate. To, my dad my dad was a goalkeeper and um, he wasn't very good, but he was a goalkeeper. And I, since I was born, my parents told me all I wanted to do was kick a ball and play with a ball and catch a ball. Uh, but by the time I got to about eight years old, there was a guy in East London by the name of Terry Dempsey who took me under his wing and he used to take me to a boys club and used to do one v one sessions with me for at least two or three years. And that, that put me in good stead for where, what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do as I got older. So a, a lot of it was down to him and a lot of it was down to my, my parents and uh, also coaches who I'd been lucky enough to work with trying to get to being a professional. Did you have any idols growing up as a kid while watching football? Yeah, I mean, the biggest idol for me, like, <laughs> when I was a kid, everybody knows I was a West Ham fan. And uh, Chelsea, oh, everybody at Chelsea knew I was a West Ham fan. But they, they never held that against me at all. Um, so my, my hero back in the day was Gordon Banks. And then at, 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 at Chelsea, at, Chelsea, there was Peter Burnett. He was another hero of mine, you know, a different style of goalkeeper. And then as I got a little bit older, it was more, it was Peter Shilton and Phil Parks of West Ham. So they were, they were my heroes and idols of the, the, that, that modern day football. Let's start your Chelsea journey, so to speak, yeah. back in March of 1988. Chelsea yeah. signed you from Mansfield Town for £250,000. Yeah. How did this move come about and what convinced you to sign for Chelsea? Well, I I'd, I started non-league with a, a, a good East London guy who played for Millwall called Harry Cripps, a small club called Barking. And Nottingham Forest um, got in touch with all the non-league teams in, the, in, in England and, uh, and asked to put forward all their best young prospects who they think could play at a higher level. Nottingham Forest came down and watched me two times and then they asked me to go on a month's loan. I went on a month's loan at Nottingham Forest in 1983 and they signed me. Uh, in, like Brian Clough was the manager. There was a, a, a chief scout called Alan Hill who liked what I did and, you know, they signed me. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really work out for me at Nottingham Forest. I did, didn't get no game time, but while I was there, I got uh, introduced to Mansfield Town. And the then manager was a guy called Ian Greaves, who was a Busby babe, well-known manager of that era. And uh, he sort of took me under his wing. I went there for three months on loan, did really well. And then I signed a, a two-year contract and I, and I never looked back. I, I, my days at Mansfield, I was just week in, week out. It was this club's going to sign him, that club's going to sign him. But nothing really happened until my contract was running out on my second, my fourth year at Mansfield, and and I told the manager I, I, I want to have a crack at the the first division as it was at the time. So it was deadline day coming up, and then he, he we played against Aldershot on the Tuesday night, and on the Wednesday 
he phoned me in the morning and told me a London club's come in for me. It wasn't West Ham, it was Chelsea. Okay. And that was me on the way to Chelsea. Bobby Campbell had just taken over from John Hollins. Yeah. And there was a guy at Chelsea as well who was like... Um, he was like assistant manager, director of football. He did everything. He did everything at Chelsea. Gwyn Williams. And uh, they came to meet me at the post house at Heathrow. And I signed within five minutes. And that was it. That was it. But that's <laughs> only the beginning of the story for me at Chelsea. Uh, so I'd come from a small club, Mansfield. And at the time, Chelsea were really struggling at the, towards the bottom of the uh, first division. That's right, and yes. And it wasn't a happy club. It was uh, it was a club in a little bit of turmoil. There was a lot of unhappy players for one reason or another. There was a lot of groups of players which I, I found amazing, and you know, I, I just at the time I thought it was un, unacceptable. There were some good pros there, but there was too many cliques and groups of, uh, to be a successful team, and we we struggled. Uh, we we found it hard to score goals, and but you know I was finding my way, and and it was it was a tough it was a tough learning curve for me to go into uh, a real struggling relegation battling team, and I did okay. I, I think I saved a couple of penalties uh, in games early in my career there, but we didn't stop us from getting relegated. Which you know um, when we did, we played Middlesbrough home and away, and. We, we, we weren't very good up at Ayrson Park and we, we played very well at Stamford Bridge, but we, we didn't do enough to stave off relegation. So that was, a, that was a bitter pill to swallow. Before we talk about dropping down to the Division 2... Division I just 2 want to, time, yeah. Did, yeah, that's right. I want to talk about your debut. It was against Southampton. It was quite soon yeah. after you signed. Do you yeah. remember much about your debut and I what do, was going I through do. your mind I, I, at that I, point? The, the, the biggest thing I remember about the game was uh, Stamford Bridge was really open then. I don't know if you remember the shed and the North, the North Stand. It was, um, it was wide open. I, and, I remember uh, cars being parked near the pitch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was later on, yeah. So anyway, we, we, we were defending the shed head in, in the first half and the first touch of the ball, I got a, a, a nice reception from the crowd. And instead of kicking it up to the, the halfway line, I went up to the halfway line and I, and I threw it. I threw the ball from my hands and I threw it so far up to Kerry Dixon. Everybody was, st- oh, 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 so it was like an instant attraction to, who is he? What's he about? So that, that was the initial thing. And I thought, we lost one nil. I, I remember there was a, a long throw in the box and, uh, and to this day, I, I think I was fouled. It was an elbow up in, in the face and, got collided but and they scrambled and oh, we lost 1-0 when Chelsea did lose the playoff against Middlesbrough yep. what was going through your mind at this point knowing that your recent signing the club's gone down to the second division as you say there were clicks in the squad manager changed mid-season mm-hmm. a complete mess basically was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mainly disappointment and uh and I, I'd only just come in, so I was I was never gonna, you know, rock the boat and say things out of context with other people, and, and it was it was difficult times. It was difficult, and then we ended up going um, going down, went down, and I think that season, Bobby signed uh, Graham Roberts and Peter Nicholas as senior pros. And I, and I remember that the, the first game we had to play, we played Blackburn behind closed doors at Stamford Bridge. And I got, I got injured in the second half. I, I've never, never had an injury. I played football, never, never got injured. And, and one of their guys had a late tackle on me and gave, gave me a dead leg on the, on the thigh. And I carried on playing and it was the worst thing to do. We didn't have a, a, a proper medical hmm. department at, at them times. And I carried on playing and, and my leg just, I just tore, tore my quad completely. And I, I, I'll never forget, you know, I, I'm carrying on kicking and I'm in so much pain and I, and I wasn't doing myself no justice at all. And I ended up being out for three or four months. And, it, you know, that, that was, that was me, that, that the first three or four months that I, I, I'm out. Hmm. 
and ended up they Chelsea signed uh, Dave Besson. That's right. Yes. What did you make of the competition for that number one spot, knowing that Besson was brought in in 1989 to compete with you for the goalkeeping jersey? First, first and foremost, we are we were when he came to Chelsea, best mates. Right. So we got on really well. I helped him as much as I could. I didn't need to really help him when he first came in because the team was on a roll then and we ended up getting promotion. Uh, so I was, I was out injured for a long time. So I was, I was in the, I was way, way back in the line. And then, uh, but once we got back into the, the first division, then, you know, we worked. I, I love the challenge. I, I went to prove every day I'm, I'm, I'm better than Dave. I'm going better than Dave every day. That was my, my goal. And now I had to be patient to get back in. And I think it was the next season when the, I think it, was, it might have been the first season. Then all of a sudden we're back in the Premier League and then Bobby signed two players. One was Andy Townsend and the other one was Dennis Wise. Then two were the two best signings the club had ever made. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying that particularly because them two got everybody mindset changed into being one group. And it brought everybody close together. We and we had this mentality of, and I wasn't really a senior player, then, but every we was all of the same age, and we we all got on well. We all worked well together, and we enjoyed people each other's company. So from then, and I, I, I credit Andy and Dennis as bringing the squad closer together in harmony, and it, there's and that's all of a sudden we started getting a little bit successful. We could beat big teams. We, we could hold our own. We, we started to be a top eight, top six Premier League team. And then my own individual stuff, I had to be patient. Dave was doing well. Uh, and, then he had, and then he had an injury. He had an injury and I played, I played against Norwich, Norwich at home. And... I, I pulled off one of the saves of the season. So that gave me great confidence that I could still do it at that club and be a part of that team. And, f- and from then on, the, the crowd, the supporters were always, always behind me when I played. It, it was, it was amazing. It, it was really good. It was really good. There was this, they knew I was a West Ham fan, but. They they gave me so much confidence. It, it was it's hard to explain, and and even there, if I go back now, I, I, you know the the people I see it's it's great. I want to fast forward to 1993. Glenn yep. Hoddle took charge of Chelsea. Yeah. What was your impressions <laughs> of Glenn Hoddle when he arrived, and what kind of a coach was he to you? Did, did you know Glenn came into Chelsea? Two years prior to that. No, I was not aware of that, no. So Glenn left, I think it was Monaco. I think he was at Monaco and he had to retire. Right. So Glenn came in at Harlington where we trained every day and did rehab on his knee. I had the same injury. So we rehabbed together for six months. Right. So we, and and bear in mind, Glenn Hoddle was Glenn Hoddle as a player. Yeah. I'm just Kevin Hitchcock from East London, West Ham supporter, hate Tottenham, but <laughs> Glenn Hoddle was a class, class player and a class, class guy. So Glenn came, trained with me morning and afternoon for six months. So I built up this reputation, this friendship. Glenn goes away, be player manager of um, Swindon. David Webb came in as manager sent me on loan to West Ham. <laughs> mm. I, for me, my Chelsea career was over. I'm, I'm not wanted at Chelsea when Dave Webb came in. So West Ham wanted to sign me. I'm under contract at Chelsea. But at the end of the season, I went back to Chelsea. Dave Webb wasn't going to be reinstated as manager. Mm. He was only caretaker manager. Mm. They bought Glenn Oddle in. All my prayers come at once. 
So the, the, the relationship I had with Glenn then, who was then starting to build an unbelievable squad, he changed the training ground, he changed the food, he did everything. He, he, he was so professional. It was amazing. I learned so much from Glenn. And Glenn was a player manager at the time. And every time we had a small-sided game, I was always on Glenn's side. Yeah, he might not have picked me because it, we had Dimitri Karin and he thought Dimitri Karin was better than me. But I played under Glenn a lot of games. And he, I, I feel like I never let him down once. And I, I would have done anything for Glenn. I, I had a, a special relationship with Glenn. People, both supporters and ex-Chelsea players have mentioned to me about how Glenn Hoddle transformed Chelsea, as, as you've mentioned. Correct. And the fact that if it wasn't for Glenn Hoddle... Chelsea wouldn't be where they were. Exactly. And even Chelsea's success in the late 90s. By the way, and Ken Bates. Yes. In regards to Hoddle himself, he was the catalyst for Chelsea's yeah. success in 97, yes. 98, being yeah. so close to the 100%. top of the league in 99. I was devastated when he went to England. Devastated. Yeah. In Just want to fast forward to your European debut, if I can. It was in the Cup Winners' Bruges. Cup against Club Bruges. Yes. Describe to the listeners, if, if you can, the feelings on that particular event knowing that it was your European debut, it was against Club Bruges, who were no mugs at that point in, it, it in was 95. Just, it was just another game. It was just, just another yeah. game. I, about by now, I'm playing Premier League. So we played, if I can remember rightly, we played West Ham away, and Dimitri Karim was in goal and got injured. Mm. I went on against West Ham, and we won. And it was the biggest thing for me. That, like, like that's, I've just beat West Ham. I was given it. I was I was so happy. So that was that was on the Saturday, and I think the build up to the game was that week. So we went to Bruges. Uh, we went to Bruges. I know I'm playing. I, I feel great. I feel good. Yeah, it's a European game, but it's there's no bigger game than for me the Premier League. Premier League is the best. So I'm playing. I think did did we did we draw one? Did we lose one nil. We lost one nil in the first leg. We, lo- we lost one nil, and, and we won the, two the, nil at Stamford Bridge. The best the best thing I can say about that game was we had supporters on our aeroplane, and they were all on the aeroplane by the time the players got on the plane. Right. They gave me a standard ovation when I got on the plane. It was unbelievable. I had tears down my eyes. Felt really proud. And that's the relationship I've had with the, the Chelsea supporters ever since. So that's the biggest thing that stuck out for me. The home game, I remember first, first, first scored. Did he get two goals or one? Gavin and first or Steeny and first? I believe it might have been Mark Steen. Just hold yeah. on. Let me just double check. It was, once this decides to load, Steen and Furlong. Yeah, in the in the grey and the orange kit. Yes, yes. Did you like the grey and orange kit? Yeah, they were all fine. They were all fine. Um, You also played in the semi final against Real. Zaragoza. That home tie at Stamford Bridge, where we needed to win by a certain scoreline, we didn't manage to do it. But we lost it away. We were terrible. We lost three 0 away there. Mm. There was a lot of crowd trouble. But we, we, we never turned up. We were poor. We never defended properly. And, um, you know, Gus was playing for them at the time and that they, they beat us comfortable there. But we had a good go at Stamford Bridge, but it wasn't enough. What was Stamford Bridge like to play on, especially at European nights? Unbelievable. Like, even, even FA Cup, we, we had FA Cup replays at Stamford Bridge and the place just rocks. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it, it, it just comes to life. Like the, we had the FA Cup. I know it wasn't a, a night game, but it was a. We, we played Liverpool in the FA Cup for four two, right? being two 0 down at home. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to talk about that. Yes, unbelievable, unbelievable. There were so many of them experiences. So many. 
Before we talk about that particular game, I want to talk about the summer of 95 when Rude Hullet took over from Glenn Hoddle. Yep. You've mentioned before you was gutted that Glenn Hoddle left, mm-hmm. but what was your thoughts on Rude Hullet taking over his position? Something, well, well Glenn did it. Rude can do it. Uh, I, everybody got on really well with Rude when he was a player. He was like... Great player. He fitted in so well. Yes, he was a little bit lazy. He wouldn't run run back when he went forward. Uh, that was his biggest issue. But what a player. He, he, he used to do things you could only dream about. And, you know, he had his own ideas of playing football. Uh, but, you know, we were really successful on the road. Yeah. One highlight of that season for you in particular you featured in the cup replay against Newcastle at St James's Park. We went through on penalties. Yeah. Describe to the listeners, uh, as a goalkeeper, the type of work that goes into a keeper when it comes to practicing penalties on a big occasion like that. I still do it. I still do it now. I, I do my homework. I, I, I was. I, I made. I made a name for myself saving penalties. I, I used. To, I used to say, if we go to a shoot, I know I'm going to save two penalties. I'm going to save two penalties. And I did it a lot of times for Chelsea. I did it in, we had Makita Cup at Tottenham. I did it, I did it at Forest in a competition. I, I saved penalties all the time. It was, it was because I knew where I was going uh, and I waited and I went as late as I could. That was my secret. So it was, you know, it was part of the job and, you know, helping your team. The next season, you made your first appearance of the 96-97 season from the subs bench against Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Dimitri Karin came off yeah. injured. Yeah. Very bad injury for him. Yeah. Just as a general question, what goes through a keeper's mind when you're on the bench, something like that happens and you have to come on? What's the mindset like for a goalkeeper at, at that point when you realise you have to come on when ideally, realistically you don't normally expect to come on from the sub-bench. Well, it, that, that only started to happen a couple of years before. And, it, and my first experience was at Upton Park a couple of years before with Glenn when mm-hmm. Dimitri went off. And you, that, that was difficult because it was at West Ham as well. And you don't want to let anybody down. That, the, the first thing is you don't want to let anybody down. And all you want to do is do something positive just to calm the nerves and settle down. So... I was getting, I was older then. I was probably 30, 33, 34 at that time. So I wasn't really phased. I just wanted to touch the ball. Mm. And once you touch the ball, you can relax and just get into the game. So uh, unfortunately, I had, I had quite a good game. I made a few saves up at Sheffield Wednesday, which was, it helps. So, and, 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 I, and I say it again, you just want, you want to go in there and not let your teammates down. We'll talk about the FA Cup run now of 97. You've mentioned it before. Stamford yeah. Bridge, Liverpool in the FA Cup. 2-0 um, two down. 2-0 two, two down. I it remember, could have been three. I made a yes. save just on half time. I remember it well with even sort of the commentary from John Motson. You know, <laughs> what do you remember about that game, even you know, like before the start of the game, during the game and even after the game? It, 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 easy. A really upset Mark Hughes. Don't upset Mark Hughes because he come on in the second half and he absolutely battered Liverpool. Battered them. He tore them to pieces physically. And then you get Viali and Zola just doing their stuff. Yeah. Because of what Mark did. It was amazing. After after that particular game, did you feel there was a sense of possibility that Chelsea could actually win something oh, after yeah. that game? Oh, or yeah. With the squad we had? Yeah. Yeah. With the squad we had? Oh, yeah. And in regards to the FA Cup itself, what are your thoughts on that competition? Uh, the, the as FA a Cups, player? I, I, first and foremost, as a, as a football supporter, growing up, the biggest, biggest occasion is the FA Cup final. And I, I was thinking to myself, I'm getting to 34, 35. I've not reached. We had one FA Cup final where Man United beat. I thought, that's me. That's me done. 
I've had my chance. We got beat 4 0. I enjoyed it. Um, although we got beat 4 0, made the most of it. So I didn't think I was going to get another opportunity. So w- w- when that one came, I, and I got injured at home to Man United. I think it was on Franco's debut. We played, I had a collision with Brian, Brian Clare in the first half, and I had to come off. And I couldn't shake this shoulder injury off, and it was getting close to the end of the season, and I was starting to panic. And Rude, Rude was unbelievable with me. He, he, he knew I was fit. I played. I came on a sub against Everton in the last game. I think it was one of the last league games of the season. And and I was fit enough to play. So he put me on. He kept me on the bench for the uh, Middlesbrough final, which you know I can't thank him enough. Before we discuss the FA Cup final itself, just want to ask you, Kevin, which FA Cup song did you prefer? The 94 version or the 97 version? 97 was, I still, <laughs> I show everybody here. In America, I show them all here. And the videos. Brilliant. Juicy, juicy. <laughs> Blue Day. Blue Day was fantastic. Do you remember that day of recording with Suggsy and, and the team? Yeah, it was quality. Fantastic. And then, and then not long after that, I had a testimonial dinner and we all got up on stage at uh, Royal Kensington Garden. Suggsy, Suggsy sung Must Be Love, Valentine's Ball, and all the players got up and started singing with him. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. Talk about the 97 Cup final. Describe to us the build-up for you of the day of the final. And in fact, when you made your way to Wembley and in the changing rooms oh, with the squad. Well, we had the semi-final there as well, so we knew what was coming. Right. So the semi-final, there was, it was full of blue flags. Everywhere you went was blue flags. So we always stayed at the same hotel. Uh, we stayed uh, just off the end 25 near Potter's Bar, Hadley Wood, a little hotel there. So it was easy driving to Wembley. Um, you don't see... Many supporters do get a little bit closer and then the place is just, it's, it's amazing. And everybody's in a jolly mood. Everybody expects their team to win. And there was Chelsea everywhere, everywhere. It was fantastic. And, it, and it's like, it goose, it's goosebumps. It's goosebumps all the time. And, and you're waving and you're taking it all in. And well, then you just want to get started. Hmm. So Frodo was in goal at the time and we just, that me and Eddie were there and me and Eddie were just trying to keep him as calm as possible so it all went smooth and then Robbie scored in 40 seconds <laughs> which settles everybody down and then Eddie Newton scored the second goal which yes. pretty much killed the game so, but what a great lad what a great lad like I said like Andy Townsend and then Dennis and then we, me Dennis Clarkey we, we kept that atmosphere the same till the day we left and then on the day we left we passed it on to JT In in regards to yourself in the cup final when did you know that you wasn't going to be starting was it on the day of the game was it before did Rude have a chat with you to sort of explain things what what was the conversation like on that I I, I knew I was playing the day before right so it right. was. It was. He, he, t- he said. He, he told his team and he told his three uh, substitutes. So, you know, someone was unlucky enough to miss out, which was disappointing for them. Like, you know. And how did it feel for you to lift the trophy finally? Unbelievable! Unbelievable! I mean, you get you, these. These things don't happen very often. So, you, you milk it and you make the most of it and you enjoy it. And, and I really intended to. Enjoy that weekend. Yeah. I want to fast forward on to next season because uh, there's still a little bit to discuss. Rude Hullet was sacked with Gianluca Viali replacing him. Yep. What was the squad's excuse me? What was the squad's reaction to this change? Because it seemed Shock. quite sudden. And yeah. at the time, did you feel Viali was the right man to lead Chelsea t- towards the rest of that campaign? You know what? It was very, it was very strange because Rude and Luca were different characters. Hmm. Rude, like, Rude, like I said, got on really well with him as a player, as a manager. I thought he's 
player management skills are really poor. So then Luca comes in to take over, and and it's I don't know who makes these decisions. Whether it was Ken, I don't know. He had Glenn Oddle as player manager. He had Rude as player manager, and then Gianluca as player manager. So yes, it worked. He he had. By the way, Luca is one of the nicest people you could meet. The most professional person you could meet. And we all loved him. We all loved him. We all, when he scored goals, we all, everybody celebrated because everybody wanted him to do well. He, he lived very close by and he, he loved people to go to dinner with him. He, he, he was so generous, such a nice guy. And the first thing he did when he was the manager, he gave me a new contract. <laughs> So he had he had my backing straight away. That must uh, have been a we, massive we, confidence boost for you. Oh, massive. Knowing that he's come in as a manager and one of the first things is And he knew he knew what I was about. He knew yeah. what I was about. We, we were just like I said, we were we were so close and tight as a group. It was it was unbelievable. And all these foreign nationals coming in and they followed how we do things. You was on the bench a lot for the yep. 98 campaign, but you were yep. in the squad for the cup finals, all of yep. them in 98, the league cup against yep. Middlesbrough, the cup winners yep. cup against Stuttgart and yep. even the super cup against Real Madrid when Poyet yep. scored late yep. on. We're not going to talk about each game individually, but I just want to talk about the team, the squad itself. How bloody good was that team of the late nineties? It was for, uh, how we didn't win the league was beyond me. Yeah. We, we finished third. And the, the two games will stick out in everybody's mind was West Ham at home and they beat us. And then the 2-2 two, two against Leicester. Leicester. You know, yes. and, and it was like, are you kidding me? We've come all this way. And, we, you know, it just wasn't to be. We did everything we could do, but it, it just didn't work out. Was there anybody pointing the finger of blame at anybody after that Leicester we didn't, City we didn't, we didn't do that. We, no. we didn't do that. Everything was a collective team. And that's what we were about. It was, you know, no, we were good. Chelsea did win the FA Cup in 2000. You wasn't yep. involved in, yep, I was in the, stand, the yeah. squad, but you was in the stands. But yep. there's a couple of sort of stories that, are, that I've heard from Chelsea supporters to say that you was one of the big influencers with Carlo and Ed De Hoy in, you know, making them sort of equipped to but, be part yeah. of that sort of Absolutely. FA Cup side. Yeah. Was was that sort of that particular start for you to become a goalkeeping coach? Yes, it was because, like, like I said, Eddie Nitzvisky was was my coach for a long time there, and Eddie would do a lot of scat, so he would sometimes miss a lot of training sessions. So, being the lead goalkeeper, I took all the I took all the training sessions. And I just fell into it. I just fell into the coaching, which was to come later. I had no intentions of being a coach. But, you know, I, I used to help him as much. Like Carlo was, he came in when Ranieri was manager and he, he proved how good he was. But at the beginning, you know, he took a lot of time to settle. And then, then he came in and proved how good he can be. So... No, we were, we were we were really close. We were, when Carlo came in, even now I still speak to Carlo. And I don't see so much of Ed. Yeah, you know, if I saw him, it'd be great because yeah. you know we were, we were close. You know, I helped him as much as I could hmm. on and off the pitch, not just football matters, but other matters as well. I'd like to talk about your departure from Chelsea. You left hmm. in two thousand and one. I've got yeah. just a couple of questions on this. What was the reasoning? behind your departure and why did you stay two years on after your last appearance which was in 99? So I, I, I signed a contract to stay and I, I wanted to stay at Chelsea as long as I could and and, and help right, and be a part so I, I went from first choice second choice to third choice and you still had three goalkeepers so I was, I was never going to leave that club at that, that time. Uh, when I did leave, 
at the end of Greg Neary's first season, um, he brought in a goalkeeper coach who, for working with him for nine months, eight months, taught me so much in a short time. I, I can't thank him enough. And bear in mind, when he came in, I hated him because he took my mate's job. Right. And we clashed. We clashed every day for a month. And, you know, I, I, I didn't blame him, but I, I just thought it was bad on how the club went away and did things. Uh, but we became so close. He taught me so much in a short time and I didn't realise what he was doing, but he was trying to mould me into being a coach at Chelsea, Hmm. which I've never said this before, but I wasn't treated very well and I'm not saying anything about Ken Bates because Ken Bates had nothing to do with it. But somebody offered me a contract to do some coaching at Chelsea and uh, I thought it was derogatory and I was upset and hurt. So this was towards the end of my, so this would have been in an April time. Okay. And then, well, I was, I was leaving. I don't know what I was going to do, but I was leaving. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting at home and the phone goes, and it's Graham Mix. He's being offered a job as a manager down at Portsmouth. He wants me to be his coach. I thought that was, you know, fantastic. Then a week later, Nigel Speckman run me. He wanted me to be his coach at Sheffield United. I think Sheffield United, Sheffield United. Then Viali got the Watford job, and there was only place. There was only one place I was going. So then I'd agreed terms with Watford and then I told the people at Chelsea and then they said to me, well, we'll match what they're offering you in wages. But it's too late. So I left. I'd already given my word to Watford and Luca. And like my other little Italian friend, my word is my bond. So there was no regrets uh, on that front? None at all. Soon as, no. yeah. But one day I would love to go back to Chelsea and work and do what I do. That would be the icing on the cake for me. But that, I don't think that will happen, but that would be my dream job. Interesting. Very, very, very <laughs> interesting. I'll, just a few more questions, Kevin, before we do let you go um, for today. It's a question that I've asked all my previous guests about and some of them not happy with it. Some of them are sort of a little bit sceptical, but can understand it. Kevin, what's your thoughts on VAR, please? Um, some of it's really good. I'm very cynical. <laughs> I think I think they draw their lines to where they see fit. Yes. You're not the first person to have said that. <laughs> and, and I think referees are hiding behind it. Right. And, and I also think referees have had the game's decisions taken away from them and, and now they're making these decisions, which I think are farcical. Handball decisions, foul decisions. That's my opinion. Would you keep the goal line technology? You know, because that oh, hasn't definitely. really sort of made a massive... Def- definitely. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Talking about Chelsea, the, the present team recently won the European Cup for the second time, beating Manchester City. It was after Fantastic. Frank Lampard left mid-season, yep. Tuchel coming over, yep. the club finishing fourth. Kevin, what's your thoughts on Chelsea at this moment in time as a club? I think Chelsea are a team going forward. I see their squad. Um, can they get better? Yes, I think they can be a lot better. Um, 
with the money they spend, I, I'd like, I'd like another cent and a half. Um, I would, I would, I want my wing backs, full backs to be a little bit more defensive minded than attacking minded than how they are. Because we would score goals in any game with the quality they got on the pitch in the final third. But in the last third, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that's the best they can do. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think they give up too many goals. Mm. Is that because when they look at tactically with the three centre-backs and the wing-backs wing sort of going forward sometimes the centre-backs do get caught with too whether much space. A, whether you've got a three or a four or a five, when, you, when you've got a five and you're defending, then you, you, you go into what they call a low block and people all of a sudden are going to be a spare man. Yeah. But people make movements where you've got to be man, pick up a man. And I, I don't think they get the balance right. But going forward, I look at Chelsea going forward, Wow, you got Kante. He, he just he's a machine. And then you got that. You got Mason Man, who, who who I think's probably one of the best young players. You, you got Foden and you got Grealish, but I take Man over all of them. I think, I think the boy's incredible. And he's, he's Frank Lampard, something else. Yeah, Frank Lampard. Wow, well done, Frank. Final question. Um, what's for me personally has been a fantastic interview and again Kevin thank you very much for your time my pleasure how do you reflect back on your Chelsea career as a whole I loved every minute of it the first year was difficult but I had 13 years at probably one of the greatest clubs in the Premier League who have got the best supporters anybody could ever dream of them that's my opinion brilliant well I think we should end it there. I don't think there's much more to sort of add in regards to the supporters. But Kevin, thank you very much for coming on to the show and good luck with New England in the Major League Soccer. Hopefully thank you very much. You've reached the playoffs and maybe even lift the MLS trophy. But Kevin, thank That'd you very great. much for joining us. Thank you. Come on, Chelsea. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.